tonight on my team. F F F right, well, um, well, that's not ideal. Um, let's try and change that in qualifying, shall we? It's qualifying day, so may the rain wash away any past pain we might have endured last time out. The Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka, one hell of an historic venue. But what kind of history can be written today? What can this sexy vixen etch into his own chapter of Formula One? Well, in the pouring rain, let's find out. Qualifying, short qualifying, as it's a 35% race here at the Japanese Grand Prix. Just getting warmed up here, and appropriately, some Tokyo drifting. That yields style points, but absolutely no pace. Let's hope that isn't an ominous foreboding um, precursor to what kind of qualifying we might have. We've usually been very good in the rain, and hopefully that doesn't change today. Through the first corners then, the first two, and we're going to head into the S's for the first time. A very clean little exit there, but look at this. Nico Hulkenberg almost getting in the way of us for a second, and so it kind of compromised our concentration for a tiny, minuscule moment, but nothing we can't persevere through. Into the Casio Triangle, which looks... Absolutely nothing like a triangle. Why have they called it that? We passed the Dorito Complex and towards the line we go for the first time. And it's a 1 minute 37.7. Only three temps off Sergio Perez, our rival of course. But we have plenty more pace in the tank. Plenty more ammunition to fire. And we are going to scorch our way through the first two corners. To gain almost a tenth straight away. Use more curb there. No Nico Hulkenberg because... He's twat. We actually did compromise ourselves a little bit, though, through the end of the S's. We take so much more speed into the chicane, not the first bit, but that means our second part is not nearly as good. So it'll only be a two-tenth improvement. And that's enough to get ahead of Piastri and into P5. So it's not looking too bad for the time being. Another two tenths on the head tops of the grid. This time, 130R is understeer central. And into the Casio Triangle. We slow it down at the first section, but our second section, that's where the time is gained. Three tenths of a second gained across the line, and we're ahead of Sergio Perez. We're into P4. Okay, then. No! Shut up! We are not nearly done in this qualifying session. We can't zest ourselves up just yet. That's not legal on this site, is it? The only thing we're getting jiggy with currently is our throttle pedal, though. Getting all kinds of overconfident out of the first couple of corners. And now through the S's is where the time needs to be found. And we do actually find it. Nearly one and a half temps gained through that first section and through the left-hander. Again, every single lap we're running through this wet Suzuka circuit is just finding little increments of confidence that we need to just push the car a little bit more. As through Degna 2 we go, you don't really want to use the curb that often. But I'll tell you what, we absolutely ice skated our way through. There's George Russell, though, going slowly at the apex. That completely caught me off guard. He gets out of the way very quickly. But look at how many cars are hungry, crunchy, munchy, caterpillaring their way through Spoon Curve. They are all spoons. I have to get out of the way of a Ferrari now. And there really is no point in continuing if we mess up this Spoon Curve, especially. I'm all kinds of... Oh, dear. WRC moment. And I am shaking the wheel in frustration. In fact, I'm absolutely bombing my way past these cars. Which I wish I could right now. Before the authorities come and clobber my casa, we're going to regroup, recharge, and then we're going to send these fellas back for re-education and reassessment Because they're not ready. We're in P5 at the moment. Let's see what we can do. The time to beat, for us at least, 1 minute 37.2. Down towards the first couple of corners then for the final time in this qualifying session. And the spray is pixelated. That's weird. But we take so much more speed into the first section. Again, it's that second part where we lose time though. It's a game of give and take in the rainy conditions. And unfortunately, this kayak is not doing us any favours. But two temps suddenly gain through the first section. Hello. Where's that time come from? I must say, I'm feeling pretty good now. I must... I must confess, the hotness under the collar has been translated into that blown diffuser. Which I haven't told the FIA about, but we're half a second up. Perez, though, sets the fastest time of this qualifying session. And that we can ill afford to see, because Perez, of course, in front of us. 
in not only the rivalry, but in the championship currently. We're on the back of another DNF this season. We have four DNFs to our name. A quarter of the races we've been out of. Eight tenths is the improvement as we head through the Casio chicane. It's not a triangle, shut up. But sliding on the exit, we lose a little bit of time, but across the line, we would briefly P11. That's a worry, but it is P5. I'll take that. I'll absolutely take that. Very nice indeed. P5. And oh my god, Alex Albon. What cowpaw were you sniffing, my friend? It's an absolutely fantastic day, it must be said. For Mercedes, one and two in qualifying at Suzuka. A phenomenal result for them. And of course, their conquest to topple the current reigning champions, Red Bull, continues. Trying to reclaim their crown as the king of Formula One. Meanwhile, it's looking down where there's a big surprise because Max Verstappen starts P11. Oh my word, the championship leader has significantly dropped the ball. In fact, he took that bag, he fumbled it, and he's put that bag straight into our hands. I... No, 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 no. I pretend I do not see this man. How... How have you managed? Logan Sargent got 17th. How have you managed to come plumb last? I've seen more talented woodlice than you in a Formula 1 car. Anyway, Fernando Alonso in 16th, can I just say? And Zhou Guan Yu with a penalty. No idea why. But terrible for the Aston Martin driver. For us, though, we need redemption. So let's go and get some, shall we? Welcome along then to the magnificent Suzuka International Circuit, a stone's throw away from Issei Bay in the beautiful Japanese countryside. What surprises lie in wait for us today in the Japanese Grand Prix? No dilly-dallying, just destruction time. Five red lights. Lights out and away we go. Yet another eternity waited before they finally went out. Perez has dropped anchor. He's had a terrible start. And that outside line has left itself open. So we get him and possibly Sainz as well. Fighting it all the way through. That first sweeping corner into the left-hander. And through on the right. That's it. Into the podium positions. Although a massive bit of contact with the Ferrari man. And I would not be surprised at all if he had front wing damage. Don't care, mate. Anyways, that's two cars dispatched of, and I said I wanted redemption. Well, that wasn't a word, but also the two Mercedes cars are in waiting. They're like prey. We are predator. It's bad news, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be honest with you. Um, they've, They're gone. They are so far gone, and I'm not even joking when I say I'm using absolutely everything I have in my pace reserves, and we can't get anywhere near them. And that front wing damage for Sainz is exasperating now. Through the first section we go, that gap already has increased to 1.1 seconds. Through the S's is where it gets even worse. 1.2, make that 1.3. Almost one and a half seconds already. Sainz is losing time hand over fist. He cannot afford to stay out with that car, with that shredded front wing. There's just no way. In fact, through the first section, back, back to our race, because we don't care about him. More to the point, he might be the chilli, but we are cooking something absolutely hot and spicy. We do actually keep within tabs of George Russell through that first section. The gap remained at 1.2 seconds, and out of the hairpin, that seems to be our strongest corner on the track. We actually gain time on George, but at the end of the lap, well, uh, it's, it's grim news. It's actually really grim news. Nearly one and a half seconds is the gap, as Hamilton sets the fastest lap. Currently three tenths off. It's not too bad, actually. You know what? I'm optimistic. Let's try and get them. Okay, stop right there. Just, just a second, because your dreams are about to be crushed. Anyway, five red lights out. Let's have a look at the start while we're in dreamland. And Perez implodes like Ocean Gate at the start. We get that outside line absolutely spot on. And then it's trying to jostle for position with the Chile himself, Carlos Sainz. The smoothest operator in, well, the east of the globe currently, however... <laughs> There's nothing to <laughs> edit, ed edit. It's further down the field where battles are a brewing as it's the Max Verstappen show. Of course, severely out of position. No idea what happened in qualifying, but he sets to rectify that straight away. Down the inside of Bottas at 130R. Requires less balls of steel in these cars because, of course, the downforce is so much more superior. But a move done nonetheless. Albon dropped down to ninth as well on that first lap. A terrible start for the Williams man. Back to our world, and it's not good. It's, it's really not good. Firstly, because Science has been absolutely gazumped by Perez and Leclerc. No surprise there. 
What is more of a surprise is the fact I cannot keep up for the life of me with either Mercedes car. I mean, I guess this is what I should expect, considering our car is literally a canoe. But, again, the thing is, at Singapore, I had no problems at all. And then suddenly, I come to Japan, and the AI are on crack. So explain that one to me then. But on to lap number five now, this is. The gap to Perez, 1.2 seconds. So we're keeping him at arm's length pretty well, actually, all things considered. It's the Mercedes boys at the front that are just using the DRS to not only, in Hamilton's case, get away from me in clear air, but also propel George Russell forwards. So on to the end of lap number... Oh. Oh, my God, we're so screwed. Perez has absolutely rocketed up to the back of us like a tenacious terrapin. And now I'm getting, I am starting to get hot under the collar for once. I'm feeling a bit uneasy in my seat because, well, the Red Bull man obviously has loads of pace in the tank. And Leclerc also does because he's gained six temps on us in a single lap. And where I had great pace on the first few laps, I have no idea what's gone on now. So much understeer. You know what, though? It could be worse. It could definitely be worse. Here we are with Carlos Sainz. He's sixth and defending. Oh, no! He was defending from Ocon, but he's gone so wide there. And not only Ocon, but Norris and Albon seize that opportunity and sweep through into P6, 7 and 8, respectively. Verstappen now is cooped up behind the Ferrari chicken. And Carlos Sainz has absolutely thrown all his eggs out of the basket and is going to, well feel the pressure. It's going to be piled on for the rest of this race, I have no doubt. Meanwhile, there's us chopping off Perez very mercilessly indeed. So close to getting the move done, but we're defending fairly and squarely for the time being. And that's all we need to do, really, into the cat. Ignore. But on this lap, lap number eight, we are not going to come into the pits, actually. You thought I was going to say we were. <laughs> You're wrong. Perez is actually going to have another bout of DRS as our pit window opens on this lap just on. And with DRS, in fact, in this case, is absolutely nowhere near. So we did so much better there. But you could see through turn one, the wash of understeer combined with the oversteer. It feels like I'm driving the 2014 Ferrari. And that's no compliment to my team's engineers. In fact, I want them exploded immediately. Into the sumptuous and scintillating S section for the final time. The sibilance might have destroyed your ears and I apologise. But into the Casio triangle for the final time. Again, why is it Why is it called... It's not even a triangle. Why have they called it a tri... Oh, look, it doesn't matter. The point is, but while I have an existential crisis, the pit lane crew are calling. And so into the pits we go. Hamilton has also gone in ahead of us. And there's Leclerc behind us also coming into the pits. And now for the big question. Is it purple? Yeah! Thanks, Ronaldo, again for rupturing my eardrums. As into the pits, no hiccups this time and out comfortably in front of Charles Leclerc. That's exactly what we needed to happen. Hamilton, though, is so far out in front, but it looks like he's hit traffic. Look, there's his dot. He's actually... Oh, good Lord, he's behind Lance Stroll, I think. Meanwhile, there's our teammate in P12. You know what? That's, that's pretty impressive. You know, I'm really happy with how he's doing. Round the outside of Jack Doohan and we are not waiting around. We're going to slap him up like a saucy shark. And look at that switch back. Our teammate is washed. Shut up. The cars ahead of us peel into the pit lane then. And you know what? There are things in life that are inevitable. Like me slapping up my teammate or KSI not being able to take a loss. As out of the pits they come. And oh no. George Russell has got out ahead of Lewis Hamilton. But he's, he's, he's on the hards. He's he Right. What's going on then? The thing is, it's not just Russell that's gone onto the hearts. I think Verstappen did as well. And boy, it's, it's a big question as to what Perez will do because he still hasn't pit. I would assume at the end of this lap, but surely it'd be mediums. I mean, it'd be, he'd be have to be, quite frankly, bonkers not to. But Red Bull decided to deploy the Sergio Polaris Perez 9000. Unfortunately, their time traveling techniques, we're privy to those. In fact, all the grid are. So as a result, out of the pits he comes and we are miles ahead. Leclerc doesn't go for the move. Leclerc is, Leclerc is a big pussy -o. Lap number 13, unlucky for some, but we're nearly setting our personal best lap time of the race. And that was in completely clear air without DRS. So that's great news, actually. And you know what? If that is an indicator of what our pace could be like for the rest of this race, I feel nothing but good omens coming along. And if Leclerc and Perez start fighting, hell, the omens will continue to increase. For the time being, I'm watching that Mercedes battle with interest. Russell and Hamilton. I mean, Lewis should realistically get ahead of his teammate. But you mean, we know how equal their cars will be. After all, they are teammates, stupid. But, oh. How has Perez gained eight... How... 
You cheating not. The end of lap number 14, and it's, it's another eight tenths gained. Although this time, actually through the Casio triangle, we gained so much time. No idea what we did differently there, but suddenly we're losing six tenths a lap compared to our previous best lap times. I have no idea why. I haven't changed anything about my driving. It's literally, as soon as you do three laps on the tyres, it becomes an understeer machine. And I have no idea why. I, j I can't tell you. I don't have the brain capacity. My synapses scare me. Into 130R on lap number 15 this is. And now with the gap's half a second. God, that's ominous. I mean, if we really don't have that much pace, then what the hell is going on? Like I said, I haven't changed anything in the way I've driven. I'm driving exactly the same as I normally do. Just a car has decided to turn into a cat. No, not, not that one. Cat, lap number 16 now. And Perez so close to getting us with DRS, but we could tail that threat. For this lap at least. And through the S's. I mean he's keeping up with us absolutely fine. For reasons I can't quite comprehend. Through the spoon curve though. And that is very grisly. Two and a quarter attempts. It's becoming much smaller. And so much smaller by the second. To the outside of 130R. But we're always going to defend that. And chop off that avenue. And we do so. Remaining in P3. And keeping the podium position. Vital that we stay ahead of Perez. Not only for our championship conquest. But in the rivalry as well. So using a whole load of battery, we've actually saved it very well, all things considered. And Perez can't get anywhere near us. So it's absolutely wonderful news. And we just need to keep defending and defending until the bitter end of this race. On to the end of lap 18, we've managed to thwart his plans for at least one lap. But can we do it on the final lap? We know how much battery they save. We know how much confidence they have. And oh no! We've absolutely butchered that exit. And Perez is about to casserole us as we head down this. Oh no! Big contact. Wheel to wheel banging there as Perez turns in on us. In my mind. But we actually remain ahead of him. Through the first couple of corners. And oh massive slide again. What is this? Terrible driving as we're getting too overzealous on the power. Too much zest for the rear tyres to handle. And so the defence will continue. And Leclerc is going to be licking his lips and smacking his chops. Uh, not on camera, please, Charles. That's gross. Through the left-hander. Roller coaster up the hill towards the two deck the corners. Perez going for another move. But again, we're always going to chop that off. No idea why he tried the move. And now he's half a second down. For some reason, the AI have, in, in, well, consumed heroin through the second Degna. And now he's only two temps behind again. But the hairpin, we've been so strong here all race. And that doesn't change this time. Even on mediums versus hards, which have surely reached a crossover point. We still have the ultimate pace and the ultimate exit through the spoon curve. I hate this corner for some reason. Don't ask why. I just never gelled with it properly. I much prefer a spork. But down the straight. And look how close Perez is. No. That's such grim news. Perez is going to easily get past us into 130R. He's already passed before the corner and actually brake checks us a little bit. But we have one more chance and we're going to send it down the inside in the Casio triangle. And we've done it. It's a P3 at the death. Russell wins the Grand Prix. But we've got the podium at the Japanese Grand Prix. I don't believe it. We almost looked down and out. Had Perez not slowed down in the middle of 130R, it would have been a tall order to try and reclaim that position. But we did it. Redemption Another is ours. Action pack Japanese Grand Prix comes to an end then. And a magnificent drive to take the win today. Anthony Davidson, what helped me deliver this result, do you think? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. Unbelievable then, it is George Russell that wins the Japanese Grand Prix on those hard tyres. I thought that was going to be a tough ask, but you know what? He answered that question beautifully, responded absolutely ravishingly. And with a jawline like that, oh my god, George Russell actually has teeth now. The world just isn't the same. I mean, look at that specimen. Why wouldn't you like... The Sprite Zero is sprayed then over the scintillating Suzuka crowd.
And for the first time since the British Grand Prix, it's a British. One, two, three. A crazy race for us. My God, did we have to work hard for that podium in the end. I'm pretending I don't see Jack. He, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't exist in my mind. But elsewhere, as we look down, uh, Piastri, for some reason, all the way down in 15th, despite how fast that McLaren is. I mean... His teammate's firmly in the point, so he's got to sort that out. Carlos Sainz had an absolute stinker. How the hell did you end up 20th, my friend? That is diabolical. Anyway, look. Mercedes with a fantastic day. Bottas and Albon scored points, can I just say. Well done, them. Bottas especially for beating out Fernando Alonso in that Aston Martin car, which on paper is the quickest car on the grid. But on tarmac... It's absolute horseshit. But the greatest news for our weekend, we beat both Red Bulls. So as we look at the driver's standings, what was a 30-point gap to Verstappen is now chopped and clobbered to a 21-point gap. Nine points gained on the championship lead. Perez, though, is right on our six still. Of course, only finished at one position behind us, so anything is possible. But Hamilton and Russell are on the hunt. And you'd best believe that they are going for this championship hunt. I mean, goodness me. Look at the constructors. Well within 100 points. The 69 points. Nice. 69 points behind Red Bull. Mercedes are on the move. And you'd best believe it. For us, though, it's easily P4. Absolutely no doubt about that. But that's really all we can do. Ferrari have escaped. Elsewhere, though, the battle between McLaren and Aston Martin. Whew. That's getting properly spicy. I didn't show the rivalry, but all you need to know is we scored the exact same number of points over the weekend. So the gap remains the same. But our acclaim, we're now up to level 11. Our team acclaim boosted halfway up level 14. Very nice. And our sponsors, they're loving our work. Lupo and Esto Perpetuoso. That's not their name. I'm going to have... Oh, that's going to have to be a contract talk with them. But anyway, we have 2.5 million in the bank. And I didn't know what to spend it on. For the first time ever, I didn't actually know what to spend my cold, hard-earned Mueller on. So, we're going to bide our time. We're going to wait patiently, because next up is the Qatar Grand Prix, and it's a sprint weekend, no less. And if we can do well there, well, there's every chance that we have a very, very big pursuit on Max Verstappen's lead. A battle for the ages, a last lap overtake all the way down to the wire, but the currents were in our favour. And we absolutely vaulted our way up into a podium. And I'd say that's redemption done. If you did enjoy this episode of the My Team Journey, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, content is coming to your screens every single day, whether it's My Team or otherwise. Will Max Verstappen win in Qatar? No. No, I don't think so, actually. But only time will tell. Until the next video, whatever it may be. I once again thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and until next time, I'll see you soon.